Good morning, lovely people. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. Oh my goodness, I do hope you're doing well. Finally, we've got a bit of sunshine. Hurrah! This is quite bright out there and it's dry, but my goodness, there's a hooli blowing. And it's an easterly, so it's picking up all that chill of the North Sea. But, so, I'm going to do some seed sowing today indoors, my normal indoor starts. And uh, yesterday I popped to my shed to go and pick up some trays and pots and what have you. And it was just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous out there. Um, I ended up staying in the garden for a couple of hours just to sort of say hello and catch up with plot friends and neighbours that I haven't seen all winter. And yes, we were all at a very big distance from each other. Um, absolutely beautiful and I think <clears throat> because where are we now it must be about the 22nd 23rd of March I haven't been in the garden since the 3rd of March so you know this has been a recurring theme this year I missed so much of January in the garden because of personal stuff I missed so much of February in the garden <laughs> because of personal stuff and I think what's happened is over that time I've kind of almost become disconnected from my garden, certainly out of the habit of it, and it's not so much that it's out of sight, out of mind, I just haven't felt it, I just haven't felt that, that seasonal thing I get of getting excited for spring and that connection with the earth and what have you. Anyway, yesterday, in the sunshine, I had that rush, that gorgeous rush feeling of, yes, I want to be out here. Yes, I want to be playing in the dirt. And so, yes, I'm going to get on with some seeds. And hopefully, um, throughout this next week, I'm going to be able to get loads of little sort of two or three hour chunks in the garden around everything else that I do, that I need to do. Um, I've just realised though that for everything I picked up in the shed yesterday, I forgot my labels. Because I'm sowing quite a few different types of, for example, today I'm going to be doing tomatoes amongst other things and lots of different types. So I need my labels. But also with the loofah, I'm going to be doing three different techniques with them. So I want to label them for that. Now, two things. Firstly, I had my own leftover loofah seeds, plus I saved some from my couple of small loofahs that I did get to maturation. Can't find them anywhere. I've got about 10 packets of seeds of either saved or gifted stuff. I can't find them anywhere. Just what have I done with them? I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm going to have to have a jolly good scour in the shed. Um, so today I'll be using these MI Gardener loofah seeds. I haven't used these before. Um, the, as a seed company, you know, they're generally very good. I would prefer to do this experiment that I'm going to do this year with the seeds I tried last year because I, I know what they did last year. Never mind. The other thing I can't find is my little notebook. Um, and for example, that's, that's, I keep very brief notes, but that was my seeding times for last year, uh, for 2018. I can't find anything for 2019. I can't find any notes anywhere. And I know I kept notes. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because with these awkward, tricky things like the loofah, um, it would have been good for me to know what I did last year because I was planning to start things a little bit earlier this year based on last year and based on how big they got over the course of the season and trying to give them a bit longer. But, oh sorry, excuse me, itchy today. I can't find those notes, so never mind, we'll just get on without them. And the really, really gorgeous thing about doing this today... Um, especially with something like the tomatoes. <laughs> I'm thinking ahead, I'm thinking of the summer, I'm picturing, I'm imagining that gorgeous, gorgeous moment 
at the height of summer, end of August maybe, being in my garden, long, warm, sunny day, five, six o'clock, I fancy something to eat, just that picking that tomato off the vine, the smell of it where it's been baking in the sun all day, oh, oh, I can't wait. So it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do at this time of year, is as we're putting our seeds in, picture, picture where they're going to be at in June or August or September. And you know, we're obviously living in a really, really odd, uncertain time. I'm gonna catch up with you all again um, about that on the sofa, maybe tomorrow. But um, yeah, what, what better than to sow some seeds? Because you know, for all these little seeds we're putting in, we're planting a little bit of hope, aren't we? We're planting our optimism, we're planting our faith in tomorrow, we're planting this idea that, you know what, we're gonna be okay. So, let's let's get stuck in. I'm gonna, gonna, <laughs> gonna, my mum would slap my wrist for saying gonna. I'm going to briefly, only briefly, do most of these because I want to talk about the loofah in a bit more detail. So let's crack on with tomatoes. I'm going to just do for now my gardener's delight. I am doing other varieties, but like I said, I've forgotten my labels. So I'll just do gardener's delight today. Um, so we'll do the gardener's delight. Then we'll do the celery because they want a slightly different technique. We'll just rattle through those. We'll come to the loofah a bit more detail. And then I'm also going to do my echinacea and my sideritis, which is the Greek mountain tea. So let's get our fingers in some dirt. Okay, so we're starting with the tomato seeds. Oh my goodness. Every year I have two thoughts, literally the same two thoughts every year. One, gosh, how can something as tiny as that, I mean, it's barely, they're barely a couple of millimetres across. How can something so tiny have the potential to turn into a six foot monster <laughs> laden with beautiful fruit? Okay, so I'm starting these in little individual pots. They are four centimetre pots, I think. I've got a combination of pots like this I might as well use them because I've got them I do my paper pots of course and then for the for the celery I'm trying a couple of different things this year which I'll come on to with the celery but for the tomatoes I'm popping a couple of seeds into each pot hopefully both will come up so not not filled 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 with compost tamped down ever so slightly and then just a light covering, maybe about half a centimetre deep, the covering. Give it a wiggle, let it all settle. I am going to be sowing a few extra of everything this year, just because I was thinking about this last night as I was drifting off to sleep. Drifting off, <laughs> I said the bouquet <laughs> does tomato seed sowing. Yeah, I was thinking about it last night that actually on, on our plot we have quite a lot of older, um, older plotters and it occurred to me that for some of them they may not, uh, they may not be able to get to their pots or, you know, they may not be able to start as much this year as normal. So I'm going to try and do a little bit extra of everything so that I can share those out with folk who may not have been able to get their starts done this year. That's on the assumption that all of mine come up because that's the other thought I have every year with my own saved seeds. I always think, what if they're no good? What if I've done something wrong? Ah, I don't know why, but I think that every year. Ah, okay, so let's move on to celery. I told you I was gonna rattle through these, but I think most of you um, by now have watched my other videos if this is your first year, if you've just joined my channel and you're new to all of this and want a little bit more detail, if you look in the strand of videos, Vivi's Kitchen Garden, that strand, that's the main strand on my channel, 
if you go back through the videos you'll find tomato seed starting videos for last year and the year before in a bit more detail okay cracking on for the celery so I'm going to use a combination of this is a lavatory roll tube and oh I shouldn't have filled it should I because otherwise can you see on the oh, <laughs> on the bottom so it's half a loo roll I snipped let me show you one a complete one here's my complete loo roll snipped it in half made a couple of little snips up the side I don't oh sorry flatten it flatten it one way flatten it the other way and then that will give you your four corners sorry wriggle 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 get a wriggle on Vivi there's a lot to do today just snip half a centimetre or so up the sides then all these bits can fold over you see I'm making little flaps sorry again I'm rattling through this there is again or maybe I should I'll put links if I remember at the bottom of this I've got a whole video on how to make pots from recycled goodies um, so this is perfect for things which don't need a massively deep root system and the thing with the celery we'll pop that there is they are so indescribably fiddly Urgh. if I didn't love celery so much I wouldn't bother but when I come to prick these out one of the reasons I'm using this is because or paper I use paper pots a lot for celery is that I can cut down the side peel the whole pot open as it were and then it's much easier to get the individual little seeds out so I've got my little loo rolls, but I'm also trying these bags that Phil sent to me. Thank you, Phil. Now, someone said to me, they're easier to stand up if you turn them inside out. So you can see the two lots of seams. This one, I've turned it inside out. This one, I haven't. I've got to say, these are an absolute pickle to fill, <laughs> to fill up with the... Now, I'm not sure I want to do too many of those. Okay, so... Oh, these are just loose inside the packet. Let's be careful. The thing about celery, let's get some out. So this is, <coughs> excuse me, this is from that company, Botanical Interests. And these are the ones that say on the inside of the packet, there's loads more to read. And I can see there's loads of writing, but we'll have to wait until the seeds are out. So... I'm just trying to judge the sort of quantity in there. All I'm going to do, minuscule. So all I'm going to do is sprinkle a few, oh that's plenty Vivi, a few on the surface of each pot. I mean really, really few. So I think looking at my sprinkles there, I've got either somewhere between sort of maybe 15 to 20 little seeds on the top and then all I'm going to do is very, just very gently firm them onto the compost I'm not going to cover them they don't by all accounts this is something I learned four or five years ago when I first tried celery they don't like being covered so I firmed them so they've got a good contact with that compost, but they're not being covered. Yay! Right, let's move on because, uh, well, I've got tons more of all of these to do, but I shall do that in my own sweet time. So now let's talk about loofah. There you are, this is a bit easier. Right, the loofah, the gorgeous loofah. Oh, let's see if I can get one to a slightly more mature stage this year. Um, so I've got a little a change of plan with the loofah because last year I got two of them to fruit. However, before they really had a chance to mature and dry on the vine, which is what we want them to do, we started to get really wet in the UK. One of them just rotted completely. And the other one, gosh, it was tiny. 
So where you would normally see luther grown, for example in California, where they've got a really long warm season, brilliant, and they harvest, I think I was looking at a small independent farm in California, they harvest theirs at the end of November, still in gorgeous sunshine, not in the UK. Um, so what I thought I'd do this year is, I'm going to try and get a few going, I will try again in the vegetable cathedral because you know if we get a long hot summer you never know but my other plan this year is to um i've got a couple of largish pots to put them in to put these pots at the far end of the cold frame and let the loofah grow and trail right through the cold frame my thinking behind that is that by about mm, just trying to think now, by about the beginning of July, apart from some of the brassicas that will still be in there, the cold frame should be empty. So I thought, yeah, why not? You know, I don't have a greenhouse, but obviously that cold frame is a bit of extra protection. So for example, if we do have a really hot summer, I can open all the windows so they don't cook. But then as we get into sort of September and October, I can keep it all shut up and hopefully that will be enough warmth to keep them going. Because I don't know if you saw a video I made last September, a postcard from Kew Gardens, when I had that glorious day out with Richard and Paul at Kew Gardens for Richard's birthday. And we went into the small lily house, ostensibly to look at the Chihuly glass exhibition that was on. <gasps> Gorgeous, it was so magical, wonderful, ethereal, oh, amazing. Um, if those kind of places are gonna be closed for the next few months, we're just gonna to have to enjoy them through our videos again, aren't we? But anyway, as we, I, that's what I'd gone into the glass house to look at, and then I think it was Paul pointed out, he said, oh, what are these? It looked like some kind of goods, got closed. They were loofers, they were massive loofers. But of course, that's in the palm house, in a glass house. And it was that, seeing them in there, that made me think, oh, maybe I should try them this year in my cold frame. We'll see. That's the plan anyway. Um, so that's not going to happen unless I start to sow. Right, here is our little loofah seed. See, and it's kind of flat that way. Very much like any of your sort of pumpkin and squash seeds. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So I will be planting these on their side, as in, see that's the flat, so rather than sowing them like that, that's their fatness, flat like that, I'll sow them. <laughs> Hang on a minute, where did it go? <laughs> oh dear, I haven't got that many seeds to be chucking around. Yes, I will be planting it that way. The thinking behind that is, if you plant them flat, and they're getting really wet, they could rot. I won't overwater, but anyway, I'll plant them on their sides. Now, it's a really tough, tough little um, seed, husk, shell, whatever you call it. So, I'm going to experiment this year, rather like I did with the sweet peas. I'm going to sow some, just as they are. Then, I've got, I don't, I've got a feeling I'm having a bit of a clump. Oh, you can't see. I've got three in here which have been soaking for 24 hours. It doesn't look like it's made much difference. And then I'm going to do another three. I'm going to scarify them. And you'll sometimes, you'll often hear people talk about scarifying a seed. What does it mean? We just want to start to break down that outside. It's probably, is it? I mean, for, in humans, it's the epidermis, isn't it? Do seeds have epidermises, epidermisite? Anyway, just to break it down a bit. So with a little bit of sandpaper, <laughs> you get the idea. I'm gonna, I've dropped it. It's gone onto the blimmin' freezer. Give me a second. <sighs> Definitely a dyspraxic day. Okay, I have scarified off camera, so. Here it, oh, I'm gonna try and show you this to contrast. 
and butter fingers today. What is wrong? Hold on a second, I'm there now. So, a scarif that's been scarified. Can you see how I've just started to take its epidermis off? That one hasn't. So, let's get sewing. Ah, oh, just to say as well, very quickly, the generally speaking, this family of squash, cucumbers, loofah, what else is in that family? Squash, cucumber, loofah, you get the idea, the bits. Um, <clears throat> they don't like their roots being disturbed. Now, I, I can't, I've never experimented of, you know, mucking around with their roots to be able to tell you that from my own practice, but it's what I was taught <clears throat> years ago by a grower. So I've heeded that advice and generally I don't direct sow any of my squash. It's simply too cold out there at the point when I need to sow them, which is around about, I'll do all my squash probably in the first week of April. I'm not doing them today because I don't have enough compost. But yeah, <clears throat> when I want to sow at the beginning of April, it's simply too cold, too wet in the ground for me to do it direct. So I have to, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I need to get them started at that time of year, otherwise there's just not a long enough season to get the fruits to come to maturation. So I do start them in pots. So, uh, unlike any, any other of my sowings, apart from beans, because they're quite big too, they'll get their own individual pot. I wouldn't do them in a seed tray and then thin them out. So I think that's the kind of the information that was really strongly imparted to me is, don't be sewing them in a clump and thinning them out. Sew them individually um, and then they'll probably stay in these pots and form nice little, nice little plug plants if you like. They'll go to the cold frame to harden off and then they'll get planted out. But hopefully I won't have to pop them on, I won't have to do anything with them until they go into the ground. If I did feel if we were having some weather issues and I couldn't get them out, so I was keeping them at home for a bit longer than planned and I had to then think about potting them on. I would do, of course, but I'd just do it really, really carefully. So they're all going to get an individual pot. And like I said, I've forgotten my labels really annoy me. So I think what I'll do just for demonstration purposes this morning, let's just do the soaked ones. And again, you know, it's it's all pretty obvious, simple, straightforward. Nice bit of compost in my pot. That one. <laughs> that one. Just tamp it down a little bit. Just firm it down so there's no air pockets in there. Right. Here is one of my... Well, here are all three of my soaked ones. So, as I mentioned, I'm going to sew them sideways on rather than flat on and then as a general rule of thumb I'm just going to poke that in there plant them to about the depth of of how deep the seed is so the seeds about a centimeter so I'm going to plant it at two centimeters in other words there's a centimeter of compost over it Does that makes sense should do right I need to get organised today in terms of how I'm going to label things without any labels. Ooh, just clean my hands there. Good. Right. Pop those there, Vivi. Pop the bowl next to it and it will remind you that that's the soaked ones. Excellent. All right, my lovelies. I'm going to wrap up um, in a second because I realise I've been waffling on for quite some time already. I'm excited. Uh, I've got a lot of sewing to get through today, so I'm just going to in a sec say ta to you lot and get on with it all the other loofers to do never mind just a quick word i'm not going to show you how to sew these i'm just going to get on with it this is the sideritis and the echinacea the only difference with these <coughs> excuse me to what i've done with how many have i got even oh there's a few in there to say a lot of my other sa flower sowings. I was gonna say sour flowings. I, we don't want sour flowings, do we? We want sweet flowings. I've actually 
given these a cold stratification. What are you talking about, Vivi? <laughs> so, I, I knew that I was supposed to do this with the Echinacea last year, promptly forgot to do it and sewed them anyway. Didn't have great success. Didn't have a huge success with the Sideritis either. So I don't know about cold stratification for these guys, but they've had it anyway. Basically, these have both been in the fridge for about, pardon me, about two and a half, getting on for three weeks. I don't actually understand the science of it. Maybe that's something I can do one of these days, is sit down and learn the science of it and then I can impart that to you. But they basically need this period of cold, of chill, before sowing. It's obviously something to do with replicating nature. They have that cold spell, winter, then it starts to get warm and then there's obviously something genetic in them that says, oh, it's time to wake up and germinate. So fingers crossed, this year that having done that with the echinacea, I might actually get somewhere with them. My thinking for the sideritis, I thought, well, I tried last year, had no success, try something different this year. And thinking about where they grow naturally on mountainsides, um, sort of Albania, Greece, Montenegro, that way, in the Balkans, they would get quite a chill over winter so that's kind of my rationale for giving it a go with them too so i think i was mentioning this at the beginning of march both of them can have a really long time to germinate i think for the sideritis it said something like up to th germination takes approximately three months so i'm just going to do probably a couple of little pots like this with a few in pop them on my bathroom windowsill, they will be out of the way in terms of the windowsill at the front is gonna get really, really busy. They can just sit there, they can sit there, sit there, sit there, there's no hurry. I think last year with the mountain tea, I think I gave up after two months and chucked the compost on the garden somewhere. Maybe that was a bit hasty. So yeah, I'll get on with those today as well. But don't expect me to be giving you any updates on them until April, May, the end of June at the earliest, by which time we'll be so distracted in the garden, we won't even be worried about these, will we? So, my lovely friends, like I say, I've got masses to get sewn today. Partly just because I always do sew masses and partly because I am mindful this year, I want to sew a little bit extra of everything just in case someone else can't and we can all just you know what maybe if we all do that maybe if we also a few extras um and then put it this way it may be that even our neighbors who don't have allotments who've never grown food before you know we get to know them via our social media links this is another wonderful thing about social media is I'm sure a lot of us are in local community Facebook groups, especially now. If we've all got a few spare plants, especially something like a tomato, which you can grow in a pot on a patio or balcony, yes, let's all sow a few spares so that when the time comes for getting them out and we think, oh yeah, they're spare, we can get on with our local Facebook groups to say, right, if you've got a balcony and a pot and some soil, I've got a tomato plant for you. What could be better? I love that idea. Yeah. You know, the Italians have been sharing their songs on balconies. Maybe the Brits can share tomatoes on balconies. I would love that. That would be amazing. Oh, I'm going to get emotional. Stop it. Right. That's it. Cheerio, you gorgeous lot of people. I'll see you again really soon. I might see you on the sofa before I see you in the garden but you're definitely going to be seeing me in the garden again soon and I can't wait to have you all there with me. So, until then, please look after yourselves, stay at home, <laughs> look after each other. Bye for now.